funny thing happened in, in New York. I went into a Korean store and asked him where, if he could wholesale me some of the things he had. He told me no. I said, okay, if you could tell me where I could get it wholesale. He told me the Koreans are not going to let these niggas get into the business. You know? And he's in a, a black neighborhood in Brooklyn. He was Korean himself? Yeah. He's in a, a Korean hair store. You think black people can get back into the Oh, they could get back, but the Koreans are not going to let us in. We have to do it ourselves. because the, the, um, our money should be kept in the community and buying um, uh, outside, buying with different ethnic groups or, and, and they're not recycling money back into our communities and this way it's standing out for me. Oh, it's beautiful, 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 beautiful. I love it, I love it, I love it. Clintex Laboratories is one of a handful of black-owned manufacturers. Currently, their brand of product is only distributed through hair salons here in the United States. Besides making their own brand of products, they also act as a manufacturer for others. This, this is our compounding area. This is where we manufacture all of uh, our products. This is where I first started. When I quit my job, I went and bought these two stainless steel drums and started in the basement of my home. After the batch was made, I would take a measuring cup, go in and fill each bottle one at a time. This is a regular relaxer and the percent of sodium hydroxide is 1.9 percent. Even after more than 20 years in business, Steve Luster is unable to get distribution for his products from any of the Korean distributors. I do not blame the Koreans for anything. It's totally the black consumers, the black business people, the black churches. It's our fault because we have not taken the time to educate our people on economics, on what we need to be doing to assure that we have jobs, that we have a, a sound business practice. We haven't taken time to do that. If there are two products and one product was $2 cheaper at the Korean store than a black owned store, where would you shop? Uh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I'll be honest with you. Where would you shop? Two dollars cheap. I probably shop at the Korean store. Oh, thank you very much. I couldn't get a loan for business, but as you can see, I am in business today. Okay, so you cannot depend on the government for a handout, and you cannot depend on people to help you. We we have enough power as a group. If we have the ability to work together and pull together, we have enough economical resources within our race and our communities to turn this thing around. What do you think about the idea of a boycott? I think it would be a wonderful thing. I think that would be a thing that would get a lot of people's attention. I think a boycott would change the situations um, and, where, and where they are now. Like with the Koreans, for example, if they don't want to sell certain African Americans hair or whatnot for their business so that they can continue to progress, a boycott, stopping the dollars, would get everybody's attention. The story continues with members of BOBSA traveling across the country, including here in Pasadena, California, where they're informing people about the black hair industry. Network. The, this, the including showing them parts of the film that you've seen to this point. Where does the money go? Unemployment in the black community is 10 percent and the white community is 5 percent. The only way we're going to change this trend is to look to each other to uh, circulate that black dollar mm -hmm. back into the black community. We have the power. I know we have the power. It's just a matter of us going forth and doing it. Next stop, Atlanta, Georgia. 
then on to Chicago, Illinois. Is the black hair situation in Chicago the same as on the West Coast? Here in Chicago, I randomly select one block in the south side of Chicago. And it's here that I find not only one, but four Korean-owned beauty supply stores on the same block, all within a hundred feet of each other. Look at this. Uh, this shows how this store is 33 years old, part of the history. But uh, I have to replace with the, some of these heads. Excuse me, girls. What town am I in? You're in oh, Chicago. 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 Yeah, yeah. Chicago. And let's see your hairdo. Let's see it. Whoa, turn around. Who did that? My mom. Wow. Now, um, I see a, a beauty supply store right across the street. Yeah. Is that black owned or Korean owned? That's, I think that's uh, Korean, Korean owned. Korean. Sorry? Korean, Korean owned. owned. What do you think about the Koreans owning all the black beauty supply stores? Well, it's very not good because I think the black people should be able to own some things. Yeah. And just not all Koreans should be able to own. But I think because why they're not doing it is because discouragement and black, most black folks they're really uh, just like going to jail now because other people are convincing them to do other different things like crimes and different stuff like that. So that's why. How many black owned beauty supply stores are there in Chicago that you know of? I don't. How long have you been in the business? Like uh, 14 years ago. Yeah, 14. No. Just like a, something like this. How many black owned beauty supply stores are there in Chicago? How many? Yeah, black owned. I think so, over 10. A yeah. lot of, you know, more. 10 stores. Oh, over 10, I think, yeah. yeah. And how many Korean owned? Koreans, uh, so almost 80, 80 percent. Uh, maybe in? I think 300. Some 300, some you know, different store. Like. This kind of boys wear nowadays. They got braids. Yeah. This how they yeah. do. Check it out. Close look. Close look. Oh, Eddie Kine from the Shot Town West Side. All right. Let them know where you at. Peace, love. Let y'all say. True, true. Yeah. Now, Malcolm X talked about African American women straightening their hair, didn't he? What do you have to say about that? Well, that was a situation back then that was occurring at the time. It was yeah. just a lack of education, yeah. misunderstanding well, now things. things is different but he now didn't mean days, what no exactly way. like that. If you get in depth into yeah. things, he don't exactly mean that as straightness exactly. is trying to be like white women. He's trying to show them a way that the, 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 to know your roots first, right. and you can do anything you want to, but as long as you know your roots, can't nobody no, tell you come, nothing. Come, no, and you always going to be sure. He just spent that money, see? And the situation doesn't seem much different here in Oakland, California, where there are only a handful of black-owned stores and over 40 Korean-owned stores. Including this Korean shop that just recently opened up next door to Oakland's famous Black Muslim Bakery. San Mateo, California. It's here that Bobsa, the Black Owned Beauty Supply Association, has its first annual Unity Dinner. And as the saying goes, united we stand. I think we all need to stick together because it's sad that these Koreans are making so much money off of us and they're not giving back anything to the community. They're not even really giving us jobs. And it's just, we have to do something. I think we should start a, a huge boycott and try to spread the word, do a strong media campaign where we don't go into their salons and I guarantee you they'll start giving us more respect and we need to start opening up more black beauty supply stores and we just need to all stick together.